and Dr. Asif for inviting me here. And it's a great opportunity for me because I've served in this institution for more than two and a half years. And I have had the opportunity to create first two batches. After going to the military, I'll be making a And we were fortunate to have an excellent and brilliant principal, Professor Thomas. So that was a wonderful <laughs> So that was a really wonderful time and I would take this opportunity to thank sir for making it so wonderful for all of us. My job here really next next 20 minutes will be to talk about uh, objects in chronic hepatitis B. If I uh, rightly recognize most of you are students, so I will try to make it edible and we'll just go through a case scenario to see how the decisions are made in patients of hepatitis B. So I'll be using a few slides from these guidelines. One disclosure that I must uh, confess is that there is no drug in hepatitis B that is, uh, has been developed after 2016. So we are having a very limited treatment as Indian which we are using for taking these patients. But what is changing is basically the decisions, how to treat these patients and who, who are the patients that we are going to select for them. So let's start with this simple scenario that a mother has brought an 8 year old boy. He is a diagnosed case of hepatitis B for the last 5 years. And he is asymptomatic, but mother is concerned regarding health of her, her child. And the only report which is available is surface antigen positive which was done 5 years ago. So she herself is suffering from this illness as we all know that mother to child transmission of hepatitis B is very So what the first thing to learn is what are the tests that we are going to advise to any patient who is identified to have a simple screening test possible. So there is a list of investigations. You will always advise to this patient. That should include PCR, LFTs, E antigen, antibodies, and all don't forget. Delta virus, which is always there, which can be there only in the presence of hepatitis. So that's, and then you have to have an assessment of the liver as well, in the form of ultrasound, or maybe fibro scan, which is now being increasingly available in our setup. So these are the tests that we advise to that particular child who was eight years old. And these are the results. He's weakly antigen positive, antibodies are negative, he has got a very high viral load, and his delta is negative, but his LFP is a normal. ARP is normal, the CRP, ASP is normal, the human is normal, and ultrasound is also normal. That's usually is the case if you are dealing with a patient with hepatitis B at this age. So what will be your advice to this patient? Anybody want to attend? Continue the So at this stage, this is a particular stage of disease that you probably only find in children. Their viral load may be very high, but it's not damaging the liver. So you will find that LFTs and everything else is normal. So this is a stage where you generally don't want to treat these patients. So another thing now we need to understand is the stages of hepatitis B virus. It goes through the different phases over years and 15, 20, 30 years. And whenever you find your patient and you get your test done, first thing to identify is that where my patient is out of these four stages. So there is an initial stage and you label these stages in terms of E antigen positive or negative. And in both there is either it can be hepatitis or infection. When you say infection, that means the disease is not active. And when you say chronic hepatitis with E antigen positive or negative, that means the disease is active. So this will be E antigen positive chronic infection. It automatically means that the disease is not active. But if the parameters are different, and you diagnose that the patient has brought E and the chronic hepatitis, that means the virus is active. So how do I identify that? It's because of the raised E and That's the one thing which is telling me that the disease is active. The rest of the tests are almost the same. Then there is a stage of E and negative disease as well. In there you will see a stage of infection, again an inactive stage, where the virus is present but it's not damaging the liver. The difference is that E and is negative. And the PCR will be negative, load is very low, and LFTs are normal. And these patients, few of these patients will again become active. And how will I know that they are active? The PCR will become positive, ARD will be So now you can understand that there are two, three tests which decide the, where the patient is. It's the LFTs, it's the PCR viral load, and maybe the damage to the liver or ultrasound or the virus. 
These are the two three things which tells me what to do with these patients, either to treat or not to treat. So out of these four stages, these are the two stages which are active. But my job as a physician is to identify through my test that where my patient is. And that will make my job easy to decide whether to treat or not. So our child is in this case. Because LFT is a normal, load is high, but there is no damage as far as LFT. One more thing to remember here, you will not label normal LFT based on whatever is written on the report. The values are defined for once you are dealing with a patient of hepatitis B. For hepatitis B, male, value more than 35 is, is raised here. Value more than 25 for females is raised here. Obviously, there is a difference between the guidelines. Because American guidelines take this as normal, while British guidelines, this European guidelines, they take anything above the 14 as well. So that's why you will see these minor differences in both guidelines. So this is the mute tolerant phase, and this is the first thing we have identified is that this node needs to be here, even if the viral load is high. But there are some exceptions. There is big no for this, but there are few exceptions as the guidelines have guided us. Because over the, over the years, people have learned that few of these patients even, they may progress and end up with chronic, uh, with chronic uh, liver cirrhosis or progress to the disease. So, what we know now is that if somebody is above 40 or have a very high blood glucose, or if there is any uh, fibrosis or ultrasound or fibrosan, even at this stage, we are going to treat these patients. So, age is, is one important factor here which should be considered. And this is the data which tells us that even normal ALD should be interpreted carefully. That's why you just don't base your decisions on ALD. You also go for viral load, you also go for the fibro scan to see the fibrosis there or not. You also go for the family history, you also go for the age of the patient, 30 or 40, to decide whether to treat or not. But the majority of these patients are not going to need anything. Okay, so we decided not to treat this child. We advised them to go ahead with LFTs every three months. PCR for six months and the rest of the standard precautions that we all should remember telling these patients how to avoid transmission of this hepatitis to other families. This is a disease which is blood borne disease. So all those things which are shared at home and which can get contact with the blood of the patient should not be shared among the whole family. One other advice is that every person who is living with a hepatitis B patient or has a close contact with a hepatitis B patient should get screened himself or herself. After one year, our mother has returned with these results. So what's the difference now? These are the LFPs every three months and then we had two PCR and we planned for this particular patient. So what you see is different now. So now it's ALD is no more now. It's rising and the viral load is still on the high side. So now which stage of disease is this as we decided this stage is initially? Okay. So it's HV antigen chronic hepatitis. If I say chronic infection, that means inactive. But now it's chronic hepatitis. We did a final scan and did that was normal. Now what's your response? So now is the stage that you are going to treat this patient. So Get all the tests properly done and make your decision which stage of the disease is this, and that's going to decide whether you're going to treat or not. Because now our patient has ended up in this particular stage. And the guidelines favor this as well. If the ART is raised, if the viral load is more than 20,000 as per uh, medical guidelines and more than 2,000 as per ESA guidelines, you are going to plan treatment for these patients. Now you don't have to wait for six months or one year. So what are the treatment options that we have? This was the list of drugs which were available maybe 15 years ago. Now it's not so. There are a few drugs out of this which have just disappeared from the market because we have much better drugs than that. So now the drugs only which are used is either interferon or there are two drugs, Intacolin or Tinofor. These are the two options and Tinofor has another variant which was introduced in 2016 just because of the few advantages in terms of age and bone disease 
that was alafenamide deprived that was you know put on disoproxone. So these are the two drugs. And I can tell you now, interferon is also going out of fashion. You will not see patients of the Prevence B which are who are being treated with it, interferon because of side effects and the response rate, duration of treatment. People are no longer opting for that. So most of the treatment is confined to these two or maybe you say three drugs that you can use in these patients. And this discussion of option, discussing with the patient whether to use interferon or oral nicotine, that's no longer the exist because nobody is opting for it to form that. We all know that if we are going to give uh, drugs, oral drugs, that leads to significant reduction in viral load and that also leads to significant E antigen zero conversion. The one thing to remember here, if somebody is E antigen positive, your primary target is to get E antigen negative, not the viral load, and get the antibodies positive, and this is called zero conversion. That's the end target point of your treatment, not the end of treatment, but the target that you want to achieve. And if you continue these drugs for a few years, the chances of having this T antigen zero conversion that goes on increase. Sir, <coughs> does it affect the stage of disease, the fibrosis? It does affect. If you treat patients even with liver fibrosis, over the years the, the liver does improve in terms of fibrosis. The concept that cirrhosis can't be reversed and fibrosis is irreversible, that does not exist anymore. Because you continue treatment, patient does improve with that term as well. So, but you can't get surface antigen pills. That is one primary functional cure, which is called functional cure. If you can get surface antigen uh, clear, the chances of uh, having any progressive disease are almost near. But the existing drugs are not capable of this. What you can get is E antigen zero conversion, DNA negative, LFT is normal. Disease progression of looks up here, but you can't get rid of this virus at this point in time. So you see what you have is that the viral suppression potent there, but surface antigen loss is very low. Or liver fibrosis B reverse or major target IV patient for liver fat cell carcinoma or decomposite disease that can watch it, So guidelines we suggest that you have no longer, our patient will need another IVG when they don't need this, because that's no more being used for the last 15 years. The available drugs and immune resistance is very desperate. Even using after 5 years, there is also most negligible resistance here. Resistance means that you are giving drug and the virus again becomes worse. After becoming worse, that's not there. What is the benefit of using alafenamide over disoproxyl fumarate? You know, over the low variant, that is basically this. If the age is more than 16, if somebody has bone disease or there are renal impairment issues, then alafenamide is a better option as compared to disoproxyl. Otherwise, efficacy wise, both drugs are similar. Any age restriction? Not much, because now the can be used for anybody about 2 years of age, and even for the there are a lot of trials of using it in children as well. So, age restriction is also not there. So coming back to our patient, we decided that he is a patient of the antigen positive chronic enteritis. We decided that this patient should be treated. So it was decided to start the patient on and back up 0.5 mg per day. That's the dose of this patient. We advised that LFT should be done every three months, DNA should be done every three months, any antigen and its antibodies should be checked every six months. That's the way you advise the patient once the treatment is started. After six months, these are the results. Now what has happened? Zero conversion of the DNA negative or may or ART be normal because lay may 25 is the normal upper limit. So now it means the patient has this positive problem. So now you advise to continue treatment for one more year after this zero conversion with six monthly follow-up. That's the standard advice for ERD positive patient to take care. Once they have seen a conversion, they have to continue drug for at least one more year beyond that. Then they can stop it. But they have to remain in follow-up. What happened here is <clears throat> follow-up the hospital. And the patient came back after maybe many years, five years, with fatigue, lethargy, and he did, he did complete, his, uh, complete his treatment of one year. 
that was advised but never had cash. And that's most of the time the situation is that the patient come back after many years with fresh tests, but there is no follow up of in between time or the Now these are the things. Where will you place this patient? Your body's various thing, he had been positive, may hepatitis or infection, or he had been negative, may have hepatitis or infection. So, if the G stand, he had been in active state or Is it infection or is it in hepatitis? It has to be based on PCR and ERP, these are the two things, or ultrasound or fibrosis. If you have to look at the name of progress over here. So here we are. Infection, because we are more positive for ARP rays. Our parameter is cash, that will be final of this option. This antigen negative will be right, this box. So now we have to look at the other one. Now what do we decide? Should we treat or not? We have to look at the other one. We have to look at the other one. We have to look at the other one. And the hepatitis has to look at the other one. Because if the, if the ALD is high, if the viral load is there, that means the disease will progress. So clear to many persons. Yeah. So, you have to guidelines the virus and you have to take a care of it. So, the viral load is about 2000 say above the ALD is negative. So, these are also your attention to the other side, the negative and the positive. Even here, they get positive and people talk about super viral load and you will go on it with the raised hair. So this is again a candidate for me. Not only treatment, I think this treatment has to be in my blood. My blood. This question. My blood. So I'm here stay down. So we have decided to treat and the guidelines favor this as well. While you don't be high here or here in this place. Now what is it? He has already used a dental and he had a good response to that drug. But after 5 years, where are we still the bar possible? Should I use the same drug knowing that it has worked in this patient? Or should I move to the next one? Same drug in the patient. Same drug in the patient. Patient will tell you that I have tried it. Yes, they will tell you. ब्रांडी को तो मैं जा सकता हूँ। हाँ, इसको स्विच इसलिए करना पड़ेगा कि वायरस इसे एक्सपोज़ करने के लिए इसका। This is a DNA virus, and why you can't get rid of this because बड़ा जल्दी यूटेड कर दिया। And it has a behaviour which is learning, learned behaviour and उसके जो ड्रग एक दफ़ा एक्सपोज़ हो जाए, next time the chance of getting this virus is very less। So अब एक long treatment चल रहा है, ये डिजिटल नेगेटिव है, सामने जिसे पहले बताया कि वि� वहाँ I may go for another drug because previous drug में clear होने के बावजूद वो आपको आ रहा है। I agree the previous drug से I was not expecting the virus to clear हो। So the better option is to use another drug। और वहाँ पर फिर आप इन चीजों को देखते हैं आप जो कितनी medicines रही नहीं हैं, lamotrigine और ecovir use किए हुए patients भी नहीं रहे, so इसलिए this is not a big choice, not a very difficult choice। We just need to switch to the second drug। अगर इंटरकोवर यूज़ किया है, इंटरकोवर यूज़ करें। और उसमें देखने हैं कि अगर ओल्ड एज पेशेंट है, बॉडी डिजीज का प्रॉब्लम है, अगर उसको रिनेल इंपेयरमेंट है, तो वहाँ एलाफिनामाइड को चाहिए। But still we prefer using डाइसेप्रोक्सिल because उसका एक्सपीरियंस और लिंक जो उसके डाटा है वो बहुत ज़्यादा है। और पुरानी ड्रग है, पंद्रह-पंद्रह साल में लोगों ने इस्तेमाल किया so, now you have the antigen already negative. Here you have the targets, the monitoring is the PCR, the viral load is also there. And if you are expecting the surface antigen loss, then you can do it. If the antigen is positive, then there is no chance of 5 to 10 percent. Here the surface antigen is the way possible. So, treatment was started. Six months, the viral load is down, but it is still detected. Do you think it is responding? Yes. yes. Because viral load is low. Jo mara starting ka that was 3200, it has responded. In drugs may aapko good enough time de raha hai for response. You can't make decisions on 6 months. At least 2 years de gaya before thinking ke chahi drug kaam bhi kariye ke liye. Aur wo kaam karne ka mujhe jila PCR se zara kada. So is, ye definitions available hai jahaan you can decide the partial response hai, non-response hai, relapsers hai. 
So, when the applicant's question follow up, I will even go back to these definitions to see where the R question stands in terms of response. Kab tak continue kare? Ye last question hai jo main apni presentation address karna chaha. How long should I continue? Target kya hai? Survival better karni hai, quality life better karni hai, risk of transmission to other family members and community usko reduce karna hai, or treat HPV associated with extra bad infections. This is my target. I don't want the disease to progress. I know this virus is not going to go away. So I will continue a longer form of treatment. So optimal endpoint in this situation may be an identification is sufficient to the loss. Wo chee bhi nahi ho sakta. So you will have to continue with this. And in the end of the identification patients, it's mostly life. Other than those significant fibrosis and ultrasonic liver sclerosis are life. You are not going to stop that drug ever. और अगर लिवर स्पोसिस नहीं है तो फिर सबसे सर्टे दिन लॉस इज एंड पॉइंट जो भी प्रैक्टिकल है सो प्रैक्टिकली इट्स अ लाइफ पॉइंट बट थोड़ा सा इसमें इशू जरूर एक चीज है वी नो कि अगर हम सबसे सर्टे दिन क्लियर कर लें लॉस स्पोसिस तो फिर कोई प्रोग्रेस नहीं हो सकती बट प्रॉब्लम इज दैट ड्रग्स यू नॉट हैव ड्रग्स सो कैन आई डिसकंटिन्यू देर आर फ्यू रिकमेंडेशन विच से आप डिसकंटिन्यू की या फिर नेगेटिव में भी कर सकते For either after three years of continuous viral suppression, PCR can be added in normal. Do you may consider, or for a basal, it's another way around three negative PCR six month part. ये क्यों आया? Indefinitely continue करने में expensive है, compliance issues है, और दस पंद्रह साल से ज़्यादा करने आया है. But अगर stop करते हैं तो क्या मसला है ये? In the middle, universal reactivation इसके अंदर हो, ये majority हो जाता है. But अब कुछ और data है. Which tells us that if we stop any antigen-negative patients with this drug after a few years, more than three years, so minimum duration has to be, there is chance of getting surface antigen clearance, जो continue करने नहीं है। अगर आप continue करें तो surface antigen clear नहीं होगा। अगर आप stop कर देते हैं after an adequate duration, maybe four years, five years, there is a chance that patient can have surface antigen clearance. And there is enough data for that. अब और काफी स्टडीज हैं विच हैव शोन कि 15 टू 20 परसेंट के आराम पेशेंट सर्विस एंड जिम क्लियर करते हैं अदरवाइज ना मिल रहा है बच्चा काफी डेटा इसके अब रिसेंटली जेनरेट होता है व्हाट आई एम सजेस्टिंग इस वंस यू स्टॉप द ड्रग देयर इस लैब केस एक साल तक तो कुछ नहीं होता वायरस सुप्रेसिंग आफ्ट Immunity reactivation में there is a possibility वो immunity इसको play करता है और ये भी एक possibility है कि वायरस वायरस आए दोनों चीजों से so if you can your patient is compliant और आपके साथ follow up अच्छा रख सकता है बाद में test test कराके आपको दिखाता रहे तो there is an option कि मैं इसको stop करूँ और पहले एक साल उसकी monitoring three months ली रखूँ और उसके बाद उसको monthly जो है वो ALD और PCR करता है और उसमें certain limits हैं जहाँ तक आप ALD को और PCR को बढ़ने � in a hope that it's a result of the clear. But if you have more activation, then you will have to do a little bit. Here you have to do a little bit. Because the only patients who are compliant, they will have to do this. Because otherwise, there will be a chance that you will have to do a little bit. So, you will have to do a selected patients. There is a concept of host dominating pratic sphere and violent dominating pratic sphere. Host dominant pratic sphere is basically violent sphere. So, you will have to cut off where you have to start the treatment. But now we wait for them for at least three months to see the patient who have cleared for them. So discontinue kiya ja sakta hai other close monitoring ho sakti hai. Or it can leave mostly relapses ho kein. Or us mein jahe different phases se guzar kein. There is a chance ke aap surface antigen clear ka jayenge. Agar nahi ho ta to phir you have to release that. Ek chiz or agar liver sources hai to treatment ka nahi kani hai. Or us mein is tarah ki koi stop kani treatment option nahi hai. Has to continue beyond liver transplant. उसके बाद भी जारी रहेगा। तो ट्रांसप्लांट के बाद भी एक डाउट जरूर पड़ता है। There are so many things about the fact that this video अभी भी हम 15-20 मिनट पर चीज़ उन्हें कवर नहीं कर सकते। Because obviously there are challenges of co-infections, how to treat the patient with renal disease, how to treat renal disease. So in that, hepatitis can be suppressed but not cured. सबसे पहले चीज़ जो मुझे आपको नहीं पता है। then you have been positive and negative immune active phases more than jaha aapko treat or other patient active nahi hai chronic infection hai you have been positive or negative you will not treat but you will monitor the patient 
to see if it's not active or bad, and then I can do it. Primary parameters are after the LFTs, DNA, and presence or absence of cells. 16 genes are discovered on the left hand side. And selection of treatment is based on stage of the disease. Then patient's choice as well. Now, there are many choices, there are no drugs, there are no diseases, there are no diseases. Interphone is generally not, not accepted by the patients because of its issues as well. Thank you. Uh, what is the best option if the patient doing B and D? As you know, in Sindh area, there are a lot of cases in hepatitis B. So in that case, either 